Well, what we need is a coherent strategy for retaining, at the very least, what we have. Uh, in other words, the operators that are here in the economy, we've got to retain those. Now, how do we do that? Well, we have an economy that is based on selling goods and services into the EU. So, above all, we need to obtain the guarantees that are necessary from any future uh, UK government, identify, for example, the players in that future UK government, approach them now at an early junction, obtain the guarantees that we need that the UK will not leave us out of any negotiated deal by them to obtain access to the single market. That's absolutely critical. I also think, as I'd outlined in my speech in Parliament, that we need guarantees as well that the United Kingdom will include us in any trade deals with third parties. The EU uh, has currently about 50 deals with third party countries. Those, those deals, the United Kingdom will now seek to basically uh, take over those deals with those countries. Well, we need to be included in those. And also we need to be included as well in or obtain guarantees that the United Kingdom will allow unrestricted access for our insurance companies, for our gaming companies and our financial services operators into the United Kingdom itself. So that's really, in my view, what the basics are. It's easier, of course, said than done, but we need to be working together and we need to be working hard and we need to be working now in order to identify those major political players and obtain those assurances at an early juncture. Well, before we actually talk about working together, what do you think the short-term effect of this uncertainty will be on our finance centre and on investment into Gibraltar? Well, those are two separate questions. On the one hand, in terms of short-term effect, I think that in the short term, nothing much is going to happen in the short term. The danger for Gibraltar is what happens, and I'm talking short term from here until October, what happens over the next year and a half, two years. And that's why it's imperative that we obtain those assurances and guarantees that I spoke about earlier in order to provide certainty and in order to provide some comfort to the operators that are here in Gibraltar. I think that with a lot of hard work and, you know, uh, working to a common goal, we can retain those operators and that must mean, that must be the priority for Gibraltar. The second issue is inward investment. Now, of course, in this kind of situation, it's very difficult for those wanting to bring inward investment because people coming into Gibraltar are going to say, well, you know, there is this uncertainty about whether uh, what will happen in the United Kingdom, uh, what kind of access Gibraltar will have to deals negotiated by the United Kingdom. I mean, you know, it's already a, a matter of public record that Senor Margallo and the Pepe have just won the election, even though they're going to find it difficult to form a, a government with some of the other minority parties, and we'll see about that. But he's already said that if the United Kingdom wants to negotiate access to the single market, it's going to have to be without Gibraltar. And that is why our focus has got to be very early on to try and make it as difficult as possible for those UK political operators to leave Gibraltar out. And that, in my view, is absolutely critical. One of the areas that the opposition has hit the government with has been finances. In the light of the current uncertainty, where does this leave opposition government relations now when you talk about working towards a common goal? The Chief Minister said business unusual, and to a certain extent, he is right. The government and the opposition needs to, be fun needs to function separately, and we will do our best to hold the government to account in what are difficult circumstances. I don't agree, however, that it's business as usual as far as government spending and government borrowing. Look, we spent three years uh, warning the people of Gibraltar about the levels of government spending, about the levels of public debt, particularly in the light of important and dangerous curves up ahead for Gibraltar, one of them being Brexit. And you can go back and listen to what I was saying over three years ad nauseum and saying, I don't think a Brexit is going to happen, but it's a possibility and therefore you really can't ignore it and you can't spend the levels of money that you're spending, particularly in the light of those difficulties that we might have. Now that we have a Brexit situation, I don't think it's right for the government to just simply say that it's going to continue with its manifesto, spending the monies that, uh, that uh, it promised the people of Gibraltar at the last elections, which runs in the hundreds of millions of pounds, because we just simply do not know what's going to happen over the next year and a half. And the time for prudence is now. And that is likely to be a huge division between ourselves and the government. And let me say this, and let me make this appeal to the people of Gibraltar. 
When I make those points, I'm not being unpatriotic. I am Danny Featham and the GSD have the best interests of this community at heart. We want to keep people safe and secure. It's just that we feel that to keep people safe and secure, we've got to make sure that we live within our means and that we're prudent. And at the moment, well, we were saying it before the election, that that wasn't the case. And now it's even more important that we inject a level of prudence in our public finance management.